Governor Jim, I call this meeting to order. We will start with the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Here. 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 All right, correspondence. Um, I believe we received a letter from Mr. Renwick regarding our motion to reconsider yes. <coughs> last month. Um, and I just wanted to check with our attorney and confirm that um, since it was our, our previous meeting and we are a House Street Board, <coughs> the motion was completely and totally in order. It was, yes. Oh, I'm not concerned about that. Okay. So, I saw the email. So, so you've seen it, you've had a chance to review it. Yep. The motion was in order, and I just want to yep. wanted to confirm that with everybody. Uh, with that, do I hear a motion to receive and file the email from Mr. Rimmer? So moved. Second. 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 Motion stacked. Second Duff. Further discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Meeting. Motion carries. Additions to business. We do have a couple. I think I've collected them up from the administrator, but let me know if we have, if we have more. Um, so we need to add 12A8 McNall K request for the wood deck decking of the bridge. Uh, 12K3 um, under water management board aeration pump noise. Uh, 12Q 2016 fiscal year budget presentation. And I think those are the ones that I've got to add. That's all, yes. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda with those amendments? So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion Duff, second Sinkowitz. Further discussion? How long does that go past me? Well, it's, it's, it's a, it, it was a long one to start with. I make yeah, no I promises tonight. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. To Mr. Nagy's point, it is a long agenda tonight, so it would be a good night for people to practice concision up here, <coughs> myself included. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moves us to the first call to the public and opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items. Mr. Stamper, and let's uh, see if we can get a microphone over to Sam there. I'll try to speak loud. Oh, yeah, it's just for the, for the recording. My name is Sam Stamper. Oh, there we go. Sam, Sam Stamper, my wife, Pay. We live at 797 Dunreath, and I want to know if there's anything on the agenda tonight that concerns my utility, my carport, or my lilac bushes and flowers. That is not on tonight's agenda, but it has been sent to planning, and <coughs> I believe it is on this month's planning yes. agenda. So it's, it's with the planning board still. There's nothing on there tonight in regard to it. Nothing on there tonight changing the status quo, which is we've got it We've got it held in. in You've got a what? We're, we, what? Yeah, we've, we've got a moratorium on enforcement of it until we get something back from planning. What does a moratorium mean? I mean, it, mean, it means there's no changes right now with your, with your carport. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. So thank you, board. Once members. we get something back from planning, we'll, we'll let you know. And, we'll and the planning I, commission meeting is... Uh, June 25th, if you want to attend. May. May. I'm May. sorry, May. 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 I'm in the wrong month. <coughs> May 28th. May 28th. I'm sending you to June. It's Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Mm. So another hand up here. I think I need to wait until second call. Okay. Is this uh, the park and rec item? Okay, when we get to the, I think we've got a couple of park and rec items on there. We may call, we may call on you for additional park and rec information. Anybody else first call to the public? Seeing none, I will move us on to item seven, approval of the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Motion mm -hmm. Sinkowitz, second stack. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Pedro. Yes. Sinkowitz? Yes. 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 
We have no public hearing scheduled tonight, so that brings us to item 12A, reports and recommendations from Engineer Powell. We don't actually have any uh, any reports or invoices from the architect this month. So let's start with item one, Panhandle Sewer. Thank you, Council. Um, the letter that I sent you this month is for the uh, Milford Excavating payment in the amount of $27,850. That's precisely what they um, uh, quoted us for that. It was approximately $5,000 less than the next lowest bidder on the project. Uh, Milford Excavating is the contractor that was on site for the construction of the Redwood project, the uh, Beechcrest project. So hence he didn't have to mobilize and he was there and he knew the site. Um, and so he installed that. He did actually a great deal more than what we asked him to. He actually pulled some stumps and uh, replanted some trees and restored the site relatively well. Um, so it's my recommendation after inspecting the, the um, uh, sewer and doing all the as built that Milford Excavating be paid at, for, uh, at a price of $27,850. Right. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we pay Pan, um, Milford Excavating uh, for the amount of $27,850 based on the information presented to us to this evening. Support. Second. Motion Sigowitz, second stack. Further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Powell, yes, I know in the past we've had issues with people cleaning up after themselves and putting yes. stuff like back to where they should be. Yes. I know that they have an article part of their in their invoice here that clean up seed and mulch distributed disturbed area. Are we satisfied? Because I know we've had issues in the past of not being really back to normal. Yeah, that's a very good question. I actually removed all of that, all those items from this contractor. Um, all the contractors put approximately $15,000 extra into their bid in order to do exactly that, substantially more than any landscaper would be. Since then, we've taken uh, five different bids from landscapers, and they ranged from $1,800 to about $4,000 to restore that area. So we have, uh, we are recommending <coughs> that that be done by an outside contractor, not this contractor, for a substantial savings. Okay. But it, I don't, I haven't looked in detail at any of these other items that you're reporting on tonight. Those, if we have restoration work, it's going to be covered by an outside contractor. Yes. Landscape, I should say. It will be a landscape company, correct. Thank you. Uh, further questions? Uh, seeing none, we get a roll call vote. Yes. 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 All right, item two, path restoration. Pathway restoration. If council remembers last <coughs> fall, um, council authorized J&M um, excavating to restore the pathway on each side of the pathway wherever it exceeded over about three inches depth off the edge of the pavement. Um, it was done by millings when it exceeded um, about six inches and it was done with topsoil in those areas that uh, it had to be topsoil seeded mulches to, mat mulch to match the grass on both sides. Uh, JJM has completed their work. Uh, they, the only thing that they haven't done is um, uh, they couldn't do the area along the pathway where there's a large hole at the corner of uh, Glengarry Road and South Commerce Road. The Road Commission has left a, uh, a very large hole while they're trying to correct a, a storm sewer issue there. And so JJM will be coming back to do their his final seating and mulching, not in that whole area that's disturbed, but a, a couple foot area alongside the pathway right there. Otherwise, he's done everything else the council and I have asked them to, him to do. I would also like to add and, and that was a uh, cost of, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was a cost of $2,800, no, th uh, $3,000 to do that. Um, when he was totally completed and I was walking the site, walking the entire project, I was very concerned about some uh, trees along South Commerce Road um, on the west side of the pathway between uh, Heron Hills Drive and Glengarry Road. Uh, there were a number of trees there that were within two feet of the edge of the pathway. It's a generally accepted um, engineering standard that there not be any obstruction within two feet of the edge of a pathway in case somebody leaves the pathway. Um, 
I requested they cut down uh, three or four trees and then add some additional millings. Uh, we had plenty of millings left over, so I asked them to add additional millings to give us a two-foot uh, shoulder there along that pathway. They did that, and their additional cost for that work was $200. That was, uh, that was a field directive from me in order to just try to cover ourselves for the liability <coughs> of somebody leaving that pathway on that west side, uh, and I'm recommending that uh, council approve that extra expenditure as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So I uh, hear a motion from Duff to approve the amount of $3,200 for JJM as presented. Do I have a second? Second stack. Further discussion? Mike, um, I, I thought uh, that what they were doing, that restoration, was part of the original uh, bid that they did to put the, the millings down and, and get the whole road. I didn't know that. Um, maybe I'm not. Ex yeah, it was done in two different. Actually, okay. it was done in three different. All right, so um, this is still bids. part of the original uh, amount uh, that, that they <coughs> quoted us. No, uh, it was JJM quoted three different items for council. One was to prepare the subgrade for the paving, okay. in which uh, a Sarter paving came in and paved over top of it. The next one was restoring the shoulders of the pathway, either the topsoil or the millings along the pathway. That's what this is. That's what this is. The third one is next, and that's the building of the retaining wall up here on uh, Glengarry Road. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Further discussion on this invoice? Seeing none, roll call vote. McGee. Yes. Randy. Yes. Duff. Yes. Staff. Yes. Scott. Yes. 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 Item three, retaining wall. Uh, this is what I alluded to in addressing uh, uh, Councilman Sinkowitz's concern in the question. Uh, this is the actual construction of the retaining wall because of the sheer cliff that we ended up with um, <coughs> down here east of the Village Hall uh, on the south side of Blengarry Road for the pathway. We had the opportunity to either slope that embankment all the way back um, and the owner of those uh, trees right there were very concerned that we'd be damaging a row of arborvitae that are along there. And um, the only way to safeguard those and maintain the slope so the homeowner can still mow that area was to build this retaining wall. That was brought to council last year and uh, council authorized JJM to build the retaining wall. All the uh, blocks that were uh, used to build that were uh, donated to the village. Um, when it was completed, um, JJM came to the village and we looked at it. He, he was concerned about how it looked, how it was finished off on the top. He had a, um, a price of, uh, and I apologize, $250, I believe, to put the uh, granite cap that you see on the top there. I think it did an excellent job for uh, finishing it off. That was approved by administration and I wholeheartedly supported that a little additional cost to finish off that retaining wall. Uh, otherwise, he didn't charge any more to install that, but it was uh, the cost of putting that in. So uh, I recommend payment of $2,015 to JJM for that retaining wall. Right. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So second motion up. stack, second duff to approve the payment to JJM of $2,015 for construction of the retaining wall as presented. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Nagy? Yes. 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 Okay, item four, which looks like we will have a little discussion. Yes. Uh, the pipe for the retaining wall. This is a, um, should have been a very, very easy uh, item for me to represent to you. Uh, unfortunately, it it became a little complicated. Um, we received four bids for um, steel for the railing on our new bridge. Uh, that steel was all inclusive except for the curved portions uh, on the bridge steel itself. Uh, the, there, there, none of the suppliers that we received bids on could provide that curved section of tube steel. 
Um, every one of those, including uh, several uh, steel designers, said there was only one company really in southern Michigan that uh, could do that efficiently, and that was A1 Roll. Um, they uh, originally were not going to provide the steel. We were going to get that from our lowest, uh, quote, supplier. Um, but when I asked for a bid, um, I asked for two of those arch pipes, that uh, these tubes that you see on there. Their quote was $625 to be able to provide those. Um, DPW, uh, we were called that it they were finished. The DPW went down to pick them up. Uh, it, on the uh, order, it said two pieces to be picked up, exactly what we wanted. DPW went down there and they picked up two pieces of steel. Unfortunately, one was the arch pipe and one was the leftover section of tubing that was cut off. Um, I immediately got on the phone and talked to the company and they said, uh, oh, that was only for one uh, rolled steel, not for two pieces. That their price for just the steel alone that they pay for is $400 for uh, the steel itself and therefore they wanted to charge us another $625 for the second roll. I explained what the situation was, I sent my emails to them and they say, yeah, we screwed up. And so um, to prevent a long delay in going back and forth and coming back to council to uh, ask for some additional money for the second roll um, pipe, uh, I paid that uh, myself to be able to get it uh, here so that the uh, uh, railing could be, in fact, built in the same length of time. Um, I did, however, get them talked down to only uh, $425 instead of $625 because they admitted their mistake, but they weren't going to go in the hole for the steel. Um, that being said, um, this is... Uh, Depending on what council says, this was my decision and it's totally on me and I'll understand if council uh, uh, doesn't authorize the uh, payment of the other $425. Um, but I would have had to bring it back before you now and the railing wouldn't be done for another uh, probably 30 days, something like that. So that was a decision on my part again. Uh, and uh, I asked council for uh, your consideration of paying the entire amount. Sharon, have you discussed this with Mike? Was it everything he said correct? Yes, correct. I'd like to make a motion that we reimburse uh, uh, Powell Engineering. Is that correct? Uh, yes, for the Powell so Engineering. Two, two payments here. Two, for the four, okay. two, two payments. payments. So, so six twenty-five to A one roll and right. four twenty-five to Powell Engineering. Right. right. So I hear, I hear a wait a minute, wait a minute. It's 625 so to A1. To A1. To A1. To A1. Yeah. 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 And 425, 425 to Powell Engineering. Yeah. Correct. Right. So I, do I hear a second? Second. So motion Cinco at second Nagy to authorize payment of 625 to A1 and 425 to Powell Engineering for the invoice as presented. Uh, further discussion? So and just just to be just to be clear, Mike, A1 is still the only Southeast Michigan company that can do this this work. So had they quoted it correctly in the first place, we would have been at 1250. That is correct. Okay. Roll call. All right. <laughs> Roll call vote. No. I think you got yes. stuck there. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <clears throat> Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Council, very much for that. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, well explained. Okay. Uh, <coughs> item five, Glengarry Road Ditch Restoration by Cadillac. Verbal. I don't know if Council's had the opportunity to walk Glengarry Road, specifically the western portion of Glengarry Road. Um, Cadillac and their subcontractor uh, met with Sharon and I in the office. They were not very happy <laughs> with the uh, need to come back out. Uh, obviously, when I walked up with council, it was uh, uh, poorly done the first time, and the seed and mulch didn't grow like it had in, like it was supposed to the first time around. Uh, met with them out here on site, uh, walked it with them, pointed out the areas that needed to be taken care of. Um, they actually did some other areas that really uh, I hadn't pointed out. 
They spent a whole day out here restoring uh, and reseeding and mulching. Um, they um, have uh, done this at no cost to the village. It was uh, their requirement to make sure that it was done per the original agreement for the original contract. Uh, I'm obviously uh, pleased with the areas they did, uh, but I can't report back that I'm totally pleased because grass hasn't grown yet. And uh, until that actually grows, I'm not, uh, I won't be happy and won't have a good report to uh, about them until we see some grass. So that's my report, and I didn't know if council had any other direction from me on that uh, area on Glengarry Road. Any questions on that one? Item 12-6. The, uh, I believe it now goes by the name of Glengarry Hills, the proposed development across the street in uh, Glengarry. That is correct. Uh, Glengarry Hills has been approved now by the Planning Commission in Commerce Township, so it is going to be a uh, completed uh, roadway. Um, the Planning Commission at Commerce Township had a, a little concern about the uh, uh, bus drive, and that's going to be the name of the street that comes in off of Glengarry Road and heads to the north because it's an extension of bus drive north of their project. Unfortunately, the section of bus drive that's north of their project is private. <coughs> And so the people from that private road were very concerned about now the people on the public road utilizing their private road to access their subdivision on the north side. Um, so the Planning Commission um, authorized the closing of the northern portion of Bus Drive. Um, that would have normally raised red flags with me because now it would have required all the uh, development to come out on Glengarry Road instead of going north to Oakley Park Road. However, there's a section of a public road that runs to the east and then south. I think it's called, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, it's a county road, the county subdivision road that goes out, to Glen, goes out to Oakley Park Road. So those people will still have an outlet to Oakley Park Road. It just won't be as straight through as bus drive. Um, the uh, portion coming to our way, there is a um, uh, decel lane um, of 25 feet with a 75 foot taper going into the development and then a 75 foot taper leaving the development so the cars can get up to speed in theory uh, as they pull out onto Glengarry Road. As I pointed out uh, several meetings ago, the traffic counts weren't there to record a passing lane on Glengarry Road, um, but they have in fact uh, provided us what was required on the north side of the road. That being said, they're also going to be extending a a water main underneath Glengarry Road. They're going to be uh, boring jacking that under the road so there's no open cutting of Glengarry Road at all. Um, and tying into the Commerce Township water main that exists about 15 feet off of the edge of the pavement. Um, their surveyors miss the fact that uh, the village has a 12 inch water main just 10 foot south of that. So we're making them put that on the drawings and protect our water main. <coughs> Um, that lies just adjacent to the Commerce Water Main. They're also tying into the sanitary sewer. That's Commerce Township, 16-inch uh, forced main on the north side of Glengarry Road. They're tying into that, and that's going to be in the middle of their intersection. It's not in Glengarry Road, but they're going to be, that's in Glengarry Road right-of-way, so we have to review those drawings and make sure they're uh, doing that correctly. Uh, they're also extending the pathway at the request of uh, Chief Ellsworth. Uh, to extend it to the east all the way to the pathway that currently crosses Glengarry Road so that we don't have a series of crossings traffic has to look out for. So uh, they are doing that as well. That'll be a concrete uh, pathway. I, I believe it's just a five foot walk, not an eight foot pathway, um, which is allowed by the Commerce Township Ordinance. Um, and they are also going to be giving us uh, um, signal flashers at that crossing so that uh, when somebody wants to cross, people push that button, the flashing lights come on, so it warns traffic that there are pedestrians going to be crossing that pathway. Uh, and they, uh, even though we don't have an ordinance to that, they agreed to that, uh, knowing that council has permission to pull the plug on their development if they wanted, so uh, they thought that that was a good exchange. They are also uh, draining the entire uh, roadway internally. So they're not running any stormwater off onto uh, the village right of way. They're collecting it all and running into their development, into their storm sewer system. Uh, that being said, uh, they're looking to have construction started this year yet. 
Uh, I wasn't very pleased with some of their grading, and so they're back kind of re-engineering some of the grading at that <coughs> entrance, but uh, I fully expect to give them approval this next time around. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd be glad to take them regarding that development. I think we... The construction traffic, where are they going to go in and out of? I know that one time we talked about the park. Yes, um, and I went over that extensively with the developer and with their engineers. There's no way that they can access from the park into the development due to the grades along the park's west property line and this development's east property line. There is a common line there, but the grades are too steep to get construction, construction traffic in and out. So they will, in fact, be using their entrance that they have designed for entering the construction traffic in and off, in and out of their development. Um, they have to meet all this all the erosion control devices and, and requirements. They'll have a stone road down to be able to, in theory, clean the tires before they come out on Glengarry Road. But we will have that construction traffic on Glengarry Road. There's no, uh, there's no way around that. Michael, you say you have to clean your tires before they come back on Glengarry Road? Uh, <laughs> Did I hear that right? That would be wonderful if we could just have, have a power <laughs> yeah. wash there. I thought, that's uh, what I thought I heard you say. There's, there's, a, there's, there's, a, a, there's a DOT requirement. Yeah, there is a does it though. there is a best management practice Get that is handled by the counties and the townships uh, in the area, and that's a uh, three-inch rock that is placed for about a hundred feet back, so the tires at least roll through that uh, that heavy stone, kicking the material off before they come out on the Glengarry Road. There is a requirement, however, that every day the street must be swept if, in fact, there's any tracking. So they are required to keep a, uh, a broom device there to clean that uh, if any tracking does occur on Glengarry Road. Would they get a ticket or what? Uh, very possibly. Uh, we have a very active police department. I think we have to be very easy to keep in track. track pretty close to the police police office too. Um, just a question about the closing of bus drive. So is that going to be a permanent closing? Is it going to be a gate closing that's accessible to um, emergency vehicles? I, I believe, quite frankly, the people and the developer and Commerce Township agreed that it will be a landscape berm, uh, so it will be permanently closed. Hmm. However, the berm will be designed in such a way that, if necessary, the fire department would come up over top of it. Um, but there are certainly different ways in. There's the public road in and our, our entrance in. But if necessary, the uh, fire department or the emergency vehicles could go right up over this berm into the development. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> Any other questions on that one? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to Wald Lake Central High <coughs> San Carry Sewer verbal report. This is a fairly interesting development that's uh, taken place. And uh, a number of years ago, uh, boy, it's probably been Need to say 30 years ago, I, I kind of developed a pumping station and a, and a uh, um, engineered septic system for Wall Lake Central. Um, and it was in use for uh, many years thereafter. Um, when the septic field finally failed, they tied in, uh, they kept the pump station, but they tied directly into the pressure sewer that Commerce Township owns along South Commerce Road that, that, runs, east, that runs north and south on the west side of uh, South Commerce Road. So although they abandoned the septic field, pump chamber pumps into the, uh, into the forced main, much like all the residents in the village would have to because it's a pressure sewer. Um, that pump station has become old and very uh, uh, high maintenance. And so they have asked the village to allow them to tie into and tap into the existing Village of Wolverine Lake sanitary sewer that was put in by Heron Hills. It comes north out of the pump station that's owned by Commerce Township. It's a gravity sewer that runs parallel north from there on the west side of um, South Commerce Road. And it dead ends at the north property line of Heron Hills, and which is also the south property line of Shepherd of the Lakes. Um, it's just sitting there, the sanitary sewer sitting there with a, with a stub <laughs> heading to the north with the anticipation that it would have been extended up South Commerce Road to service the Panhandle, the 7-Eleven uh, and all those people. When the uh, Beechcrest project came uh, and presented itself, um, 
the panhandle, the rest of the panhandle was able to be served by an internal sanitary sewer system that is now going to serve the rest of the panhandle. So this sanitary sewer stub that's sitting there uh, was uh, totally empty and not being utilized. Um, Walt Lake Central came to the village through, via Commerce Township and asked whether or not they couldn't tie directly into our sanitary sewer. Uh, and then by gravity, their whole building could run into the sanitary sewer and into the pump station of Commerce Township and be carried out uh, where it currently is treated by Commerce Township. Um, there's technically no reason why we shouldn't allow them to do that. I'm in full favor of eliminating pump stations. It's a good, uh, it's a good idea for Wall Lake Central to cut some of their costs and uh, operate as most efficiently as they can. And so therefore this verbal report is to just let you know. Now, uh, the village owns that sewer. So if, if council has a problem with this, you, you can certainly let me know but it's a section of sewer not being utilized at all and it makes a great deal of sense to allow uh, the Wall Lake school system to run the Wall Lake Central sewage into that sewer. It runs, uh, what's that, about 500 feet to the south into Commerce Township's pump station and then to their treatment plant from there. So it, there's virtually no impact on the village whatsoever. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that that activity is uh, before us and um, and they're asking us to allow them to tap that sanitary sewer. So Mike, if we had any further development in that area, would that have any effect on anything? No. Okay. No, none whatsoever. As a matter of fact, the only, the only possibility of it ever being used, again, is for the church itself. They have a septic field out front. Uh, if that septic field were ever to fail, they must actually tie into this sewer. Um, but uh, it, it will have no impact on us whatsoever. There's more than enough capacity. So plenty of capacity for both school and church. Plenty of capacity, correct. Uh, question about the, the TAP fees. Yes. My understanding is that since the school is actually in commerce, not in the village, and they've already paid a TAP fee to go in, there's actually no TAP fee coming for that. Is that correct? That is correct. They're fully up to date on the TAP fees to Commerce Township. Uh, we don't get nothing. Uh, the intergovernmental agreement now. between the village and Commerce <laughs> Township uh, specifically states oh, that the village has uh, control over properties in the village, not in Commerce Township. And so uh, we, we really don't have a right to impose a fee, and I'm not exactly sure that it would be the right thing to do. So, but that's, uh, that's in the uh, in governmental agreement anyway. So the church will have to pay a tap fee. Oh, the church will, absolutely. Yeah. And quite frankly, the village is uh, accepting um, fees for every building that's being tapped in Redwood, mm -hmm. in, in the Beechcrest mm -hmm. property. So uh, absolutely, every chance we can, we're uh, accepting those fees. Um, and actually, our treasurer informs us that the church has already paid their tap fee up front. Um, they paid their tap fee to Commerce Township. Yeah, but they were specially right. assessed for. For Commerce Township fees. But when they tap, they'll still owe the village tap fees. Um, so we are collecting plenty of tap fees up there, yeah. not one. Do we school. need a motion on this, Mr. President? I don't, I don't think so. I think that's just think so. an update. Yeah. Right. Okay, fine. Um, any other questions about that? I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the intergovernmental. Okay. I just want to. I can give you the we sections. Right. Yeah, okay. I mean, I have. Yes. A million copies. I think it's, a, <laughs> I think it's section 17 <laughs> of the latest okay. agreement. You've looked at it before. You'll look at it again. <laughs> I just yes. don't recall it right now. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, any further discussion on that one? Okay, uh, item 12A8, uh, wood decking. Yes, and I thank council for allowing this to be added. The uh, contractor is a uh, uh, smaller uh, contractor. He lives in the village. He's a, so he's a village resident. Um, did a uh, marvelous job on the uh, building that bridge. Uh, he built it in his yard. Uh, the DPW was very instrumental in bringing the uh, decking to the site. The DPW set them in place with the, uh, with the backhoe equipment. The contractor, the, um, the carpenter was there to help set and then complete all the tie-ins. Um, he uh, thought he had emailed this invoice to us uh, earlier. He did not. And so um, uh, Sharon uh, very fortunately added it to the agenda tonight for your consideration. Uh, it is uh, precisely, and I apologize, I don't have that with me, but it is precisely what council uh, accepted <coughs> as the low bid for that bridge. Uh, he didn't bill us a penny more for building the bridge, 
Uh, this is another, uh, there is another discretionary item uh, that I described in my letter to you. Uh, the bridge was complete. DPW had put um, uh, barrels in front of the bridge. Um, it just appeared to be a danger of a bridge sitting there, almost an attractive nuisance, so with people walking up on the bridge and looking over. Um, I requested uh, the contractor to put some wood railings on that bridge just, just as a psychological barrier so that people didn't make a mistake and fall off the side of the bridge if they went around our barricades. Um, and although I never witnessed anybody falling or leaning over, I witnessed many, many people biking and, and walking over that bridge around the barricades. Um, so I, I, I feel very comfortable that was probably the right decision to make. Uh, but again, uh, that, is, uh, that was my discretion again. And I did this three times to you tonight. Um, and uh, one of these days I might get my hand slapped. But uh, I, I do what I try to think is right for the village. And uh, so we added um, an additional uh, $300 so yeah, 50 to the bid. 5500 for the original and 300 for the field change. That is correct. All right, do I hear a motion? I'd like to make a motion to pay the 6800 for the bridge and the railing. Motion Duff, do I hear a second? Second. Second, second Sinkowitz. Further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Yes. 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 Mr. President, one thing I want to bring up real quickly. Um, the chief's not here, but I'm sure he'll attest to it. The crosswalk paint on that new pavement, I think not only the oil in the pavement, but the traffic that goes over it, it's really, really faded out. And so many people are parked in the crosswalk waiting for the light to change. So there's a c other crosswalks that I think need to be repainted too, but I think that one there, especially where, you know, it's right there at Glengarry and South Commerce, it needs to be re redone. Okay, let's do it. It may be do tape instead of paint that last Paint, year. tape, whatever we do, but. I have an update that I can bring to council on that. Uh, the chief, Sharon and I, we're all very concerned about the quality and the longevity of the paint there, especially on Glengarry Road. Uh, as well as some other areas. Um, we, had a, we had a fairly strong meeting with PK Striping, who is a first-class striping company. They do work for the county. They and another company flip back and forth year to year, so they're one of two very large companies that do this work. They're the primary contractor for Oakland County. Um, they came out and said, due to the exact condition that, that um, uh, Councilman Sinkelwood said, because of the oils, all the traffic, and things like that, um, they had expected it to deteriorate like it did. However, um, and Sharon's uh, very good at this, uh, to, uh, to keep the village happy, uh, they have uh, temporarily agreed, because they haven't gotten their higher ups uh, to agree to this, but the people we talked to have said that uh, they would represent to come back and do all three of the Glengarry Road crossings again. Uh, for us to make sure they stand out better than they are. They highly recommend uh, that after they do that, that the next time we put tape down and, and not the paint. Uh, we used uh, a standard paint, as you can see, the lineal, the longitudinal painting along Glendale Road stood up really well, but where traffic crosses those, uh, it, it, it disappears fairly quickly. Um, there's uh, different levels of paint that can be used, but the county uses the, uh, the tape, and now that the road is aging a little bit, we can use the tape the next time, and uh, that's probably would be my recommendation. Uh, if I could, are there any questions on that? Because I have one additional item I wanted to. So there's a chance we might, that, that if Sharon beats up on him, we might get it done. That Sharon has already <laughs> beat up on him. Now it's Good. a matter of whether or not the, uh, the owners of the company will come through as well. They don't have a chance. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, one additional item on the bridge and the pathway. If you've walked that, you've seen that uh, that some of the asphalt has settled as it's uh, as you approach that bridge. We kind of expected that, as you know. I uh, we found about nine to fifteen feet of peat in that area there. So uh, 
that we expected that to drop a little bit. And um, later on in the year, I expect that I will have a price from H.D. Uh, Sarger, who did all the paving in the village, and they've got a little tweaking to do on a couple areas that I'm concerned about in the village anyway. Um, I ha hope to get a price from them to bring back to you to uh, repave the areas where it comes up to the pathway or up to the bridge itself to level those areas back out again. Um, but that's why if you walk, you'll see that some of them are tipped uh, a little bit, and that's why it's just settled under the, under the peat. Um, I've designed that bridge to be able to be, it's kind of a, a hinge so that each side will flex up and down with the pavement. So we should never experience a big gap between the wood and the asphalt. Um, but this is a, uh, the asphalt path itself is just not settling equally. So any other questions? Is that gonna be a safety hazard until you get it corrected? I don't think so. It still meets ADA handicap requirements, which is a 2%. It was designed to come straight off. It's just pitched to the west a little bit on the north side of the bridge. So um, when it becomes a, uh, an issue, a hazard, then I think it'll be time at that time to repave it. Don't wait until it. it gets that far. Okay, we'll, we'll not. Please. All right, anything else on the engineer tonight? Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Powell. <coughs> okay, item 12B, recommendation from planning. We've actually got a few things from planning coming up here. Mm -hmm. uh, planning Commission recommends Council appoint Robert Ray to fill a vacancy with a term expiring 12 31 2016. Mr. Medro, anything to say? Well, Mr. Ray's been on the uh, ZBA <coughs> for a uh, year and a half, a year or so. No. Well, one, one meeting? <laughs> I thought it was longer than that, but anyways. Um, yeah. And uh, one of our uh, past members happened to be our liaison to uh, CBA, uh, Mr. Cook, and he had uh, resigned. So we were short a uh, liaison to planning and for uh, ZBA, and Mr. Ray uh, stepped up and wanted to be on the Planning Commission, so we thought it would be a perfect fit if he was on uh, the Planning Commission, was going to be ZBA liaison at the same time. So, um, came to the meeting last last month and uh, we interviewed him and sounds like he'd be a good candidate. So, he's a contractor, he's got some experience and uh, so should be a good fit. All right. Questions? Comments? We have a little concern with that. You have to be a member of the, the planning, planning commission. commission to be. So he's going to have to resign from ZBA and then Ooh, be the true. liaison yeah, I'm I'm to oh, ZBA. True. He can't be mm. no. both. Yeah. No. Okay. So I mean, it can work, but he's going to have to resign pick from one. ZBA. Get yeah. To pick one. That's right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> but if you're on planning, you could be the liaison be to liaison. ZBA. But then and they ZBA need one. Needs they need one too. They actually need one. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, that might you'd be fulfilling <laughs> so three positions. Good <laughs> deal. He would technically be on ZBA anyway. You have to resign from ZBA as yes. a member of ZBA. You'd be appointed to planning, and then they would appoint you as ZBA to the ZBA. So you wouldn't technically. <laughs> I'm I'm following this, but you look like you are not. <laughs> you have to resign. Either that, or he could be on planning as as. A separate member, member, not liaison. Yeah, he doesn't have He'd to just be a liaison. A, he would be it a, could be, but it sounds like it's planning's intention to make him the liaison. Well, it would be awful convenient. Yes. <laughs> it was convenient. Um, that was so he, he needs to resign from ZBA. Yes. So okay. Uh, would I still be on the, after, so I go to planning, and then I'm still on the ZBA board? If they appoint you as the liaison, yeah. yes. And Which you would still be an active board. member <laughs> of the ZBA, yes. Right. Two steps back, two steps forward. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. What's we gonna do? Because we got a ZBA meeting this week before the planning commission meeting. Well, he has to resign from he ZBA, resigned. so he would do that at the ZBA meeting. He would do that at the ZBA can meeting. We have, can we have <laughs> a verbal? <laughs> I, 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 I think oh. I can see our way to a motion that will that will that will eventually accommodate this. Yes. So, and wow. ZBA could use right. the member for this for this week. That's what so I'm saying. I think I would entertain a motion to appoint Robert Ray to the Planning Commission, for conditional on his resignation from ZBA, which you can tender 
after the upcoming ZBA me meeting. At that point, at that he, point would be, he would get sworn in. You would appear at the next planning <coughs> meeting. Planning would then appoint you as the liaison to CBA, and liaison. that would get you in between. So is that is that you satisfied with that? I mean, which one do you want to be a primary member? No, we can't. We can't swear. We can't swear him in until after the CBA he or the planning CBA. commission. So okay. he's not gonna. That actually, the next CBA meeting is just a training. It's a training session. session. So it, he can resign at the beginning of that meeting. Because yeah. if he didn't resign at the beginning of the meeting, if he actually sat in on that meeting, he'd have to resign at the next meeting. But it's just a training oh, for session. Them to, to it's it's yeah. still a meeting. There's he, no cases, but we'll it is a meeting. Resignation. We'll, put, we'll yeah. put his resignation on the agenda ahead of the, uh, ahead of the study session. I guess my question, I don't know we've asked Mr. Ray, which, what do you want to be the primary member? The ZBA or the Planning Commission? Okay. I mean, we're, we're making decisions for him. There's a <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this, this, this gets you both planning and ZBA, but the only way to do both planning and ZBA is to be a member of planning who is then the liaison to ZBA. Right. Is that still a voting number? Yes. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. So there's, the, we, we can't do it the vice versa where you're a member of ZBA so and you ZBA get two makes paychecks. you liaison to planning. <laughs> both, <laughs> both, both with, e with an equal round number. Either that, or if you just want, if you don't feel like you want to be liaison, liaison to, to the ZBA through planning, you can still, we can still have you on planning, and we just have to find another ZBA liaison. But, but his first choice is ZBA, right. so he yeah. would rather be on ZBA if he can't be on both. Mm -hmm. But he could be on both. That's what I'm saying. I can sit on both boards, just not being a liaison. Right. No. 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 That's the whole issue. The only way you're going to sit on both boards is yeah. as liaison to the ZBA from the planning commission. Hmm. Politics. It won't change. It won't look any different yeah. to you at all. Mm -hmm. you're, you'll still be sitting on the ZBA and voting. You're just, you have to resign first from the ZBA. <laughs> Okay, so th so then I think we can have a motion like to appoint him to the planning commission, <laughs> conditional on his resignation from ZBA. After ZBA accepts your resignation, we can swear you in before the next planning commission meeting, and you can start on planning. They can then appoint you to ZBA. <laughs> I'll make that motion. <laughs> okay, but I won't repeat it. Yeah, I'll motion it motion there, yeah. from Singo is second, it. Nagy, to appoint uh, Robert Ray to the he Planning Commission so conditional on it. his resignation from the ZBA. Uh, the tongue twister. And that was so no, no, no swearing. swearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No swearing. Wow. Uh, further discussion of that motion? No. <laughs> Vote okay. quick. Um, all in favor? No quick. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, eventually. He might try to get out of here. Yeah. Oh. Sergeant at Arms, Sergeant okay. at Arms, watch the door. Next up from planning, master plan. Um, we'll, start with, start, we'll start with you. We'll see what Brian has to add. And or the attorney. What you have in front of you tonight is the um, revised master plan. Uh, that has gone through the Planning Commission and there's a requirement through the Planning Enabling Act that requires communities to update their master plan every five years <coughs> and our last update was 2008 so we were due for an update the draft plan was um, given to you in November of 14 for review and comments and after you reviewed uh, it was sent to all the neighboring communities and Oakland County and they were all given 63 days to review and uh, provide comments back to the Planning Commission. After the Planning Commission received their comments, um, they held a public hearing mm -hmm. on the draft master plan, and that's what you have in front of you tonight for review and adoption. There's a few things that will be changed in this, and it's just pictures. We've got some There's, pictures we want to change right, yet. The building and... A couple obviously like the yeah obviously under the introduction here the face of the buildings changed and we, we would rather have the new face in here than on a new master plan than the current one uh, we also thought about the on page four uh, the picture going down 
South Commerce there. We figured maybe putting a picture, changing that picture, and Tom Height was looking at doing that. Maybe something incorporating going, coming down Glengarry and showing the, the dam and the bridge. Um, I think that's primarily about it. Or at the very least, one would be new passing lane and pathway. Yeah, there yeah. you go. We're going to keep the swan and move a Canadian goose? Or? Probably. Okay. <laughs> So a motion from council, if you uh, are so inclined, would be to adopt the master plan as presented. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Motion does. Second. Second Scott to adopt the master plan as presented, being cognizant that a few of the photos may get changed and updated. Further discussion? Does that swan get residuals? No. <laughs> I, think a, I think it's a, it's a, lead. Yeah, it, nice. it took us a while to get through, but I think it's a really, it's a really nice master plan. It's yeah. a really good document for where we are as a community. So, <laughs> another five years. Another five years, mm -hmm. and then then we have to indicate our intention to update the master plan. <laughs> then we can begin up, updating the master plan. Yeah. Um, seeing no further discussion, let me get a roll call vote. Scott. Yes. Pedro? Yes. Cinquet? Yes. Cinquet? Yes. Cinquet? yes. 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 Motion carries. Um, okay, brings us to our <coughs> stack of ordinances, most of which are um, fairly incidental. Incidental updates. Uh, there is uh, an item on accessory buildings that uh, relates to some discussions we've had. So, um, to, Brian, why don't, why don't I go to you on each of these? You sure. can tell us what the what the gist of the change is. Well, under the first one on the random D there, 106A99. Um, the only thing we did on that um, was when we ended up going through our uh, bulk building limitations for changing the uh, length of the sheds and stuff, we ended up changing the height. And it was at 18, we brought it back down to 14. So that's the only item on that that would be under residential accessory, accessory buildings and structures uh, down to 14 feet. So. So do I hear a motion to introduce ordinance number 106A99 as presented? So moved. Support. Motion sequence, second, second Nedro. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Nedro. Yes. Yes. McGee? Yes. Maggie? Yes. 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 All right, uh, 106A100. <clears throat> okay, basically what we ended up doing is this was addressing the landscape portion of the fence ordinance and uh, essentially we added the purpose under this section so the purpose is the section to maintain open lake park like atmosphere around the lake allow each lake front property owner views the lake so that was kind of stated in originally in the fence ordinance like uh, landscape portion of it but it really wasn't in there under a purpose section so um, that's essentially what we decided to go go for on that uh, second page, uh, we ended up just basically adding landscape fences in, in portions where it should have been and it wasn't originally placed. So under item D there, maximum height, so like fences, fences and landscape fences. Right. And, uh, do, 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 do. Arbor's trellis under item 6 was changed a little bit. So essentially that the rest of the fence ordinance was the same so all right so now that what you're saying is you can't put a row of bushes down there and make a fence out of it or we, a, we a, try a, to make it more barrier <coughs> more uh more explicit so you can also definite or defined yeah you also yes. can't put a row of trellises down there right that's out of it Do I hear a motion to introduce ordinance number 106A100 as presented? So moved. Support. Okay. Motion stacks. Second Sinkowitz. Further discussion on that one. Uh, we get a roll call vote. Sinkowitz. Yes. 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 Right along. 106A101. Okay. Going along with the fence portion, um, we needed, <coughs> didn't realize it, but originally when we 
we've had this on the books for what, probably 10 years? Mm -hmm. And we had no definitions for arbors, landscape, fences. So essentially what we ended up doing is defining uh, an arbor and landscape fences. So that's all this is doing is inserting those definitions in the uh, definition section. All right, do I hear a motion to introduce 106A101 as presented? So moved. Motion Duff, second Nagy, further discussion on that one. Just a general comment. I was wondering, I, it might be extra work and I don't know if it has any effect on how these are adopted, but is it possible to underline the changes? Because when you go through the ordinance and try and compare the two, yeah. it gets a little bit confusing as to what the differences really are. I mean, not, not to bring you. highlight it or something. Uh, you know, I'm glad you're right. here to explain that, but. Uh, in the reading, yes. It yeah, was, in the reading, uh, it's, it's a yeah, challenge. It is a challenge. So if that's possible, it would help. The, the, when the planner makes the proposal to the planning commission, okay. they're. Um, Different letters. They yeah. underline the text. Yeah. They do so if right. that, yeah. just include that in a That'd council be great. packet, and then you'll That'd see. be appreciated. And then have the, I mean, it might have the way it's going to be written in there also because that's the way it'd have to be introduced right so we get the final language in the there final with the language proposed right right with the with the with the markup changes yeah. and so that right. at least lets us see what they were mm -hmm. what they were yeah. yeah that's great thank you yeah i think that would be helpful so um we've got the motion we've got the discussion anything else on uh 106 a101 Roll call vote. Me. Yes. Maggie? Yes. 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 And finally, A102. Um, in going through some of the uh, ordinances that we we actually were looking at, our planning consultant suggested we we look at uh, updating our our uh, uh, be. Basically, our pictures or, or definitions of required and unrequired interior and lot layouts. Um, ours that we were currently using was quite old and didn't have any required or unrequired yard uh, pictorials at all. So this really is a is a new version. It, it, it's clearly defined. So we thought that would be a good idea. Yeah, That's I found this proposing. one actually. Uh, a nice improvement. Yeah. It's it's hard enough trying to figure out what a required and unrequired yard is without a picture. So right. I mean, this makes it so much easier. Yep. So, do I hear a motion to introduce uh, Ordinance 106A102 as presented? So moved. Motion stacked. Second Sinkowitz. Further discussion on this one. Seeing none. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 All right. Um, thank you, Brian. <laughs> thank you, Planning Commission. Nicely done there, Brian. Can't say what okay. Uh, <laughs> brings us to item H, uh, request from the Benson <coughs> Grill to use Clara Miller Park for additional parking. I know we've got some folks from there. Uh, let me see who's representing you guys and then I know our attorney has some input here and we'll have some discussion so um, let, me, let me call on you and then actually come on up to the mic so folks can hear you Glenn Kaplan, Benstein girl thank you so we're here today uh, as I've spoke with some of you and I've met a lot of you and seen some of you at the restaurant we bought the restaurant uh, in auction last summer Spent a lot of time renovating it from the draft into more of a family-oriented restaurant to attract people like ourselves and not that 2 o'clock in the morning crowd that was kind of an issue coming from a resident who lives off of Benstein Road. And when we got it, we wanted to create that environment that was welcoming to everybody. And when, when I originally purchased it with my partner Mike back there, we knew that there was going to be some issues with parking as there was when they built the draft, when they knocked down the Athenian. We used to see the cars piling up on Benstein Road and parking in the cemetery and over in the park. And what we did after we purchased it, we tried to secure some parking next door with uh, Jim who owns the daycare. And there was another place on the other side that we originally worked with 
that was going to give us some spots that unfortunately that fell through a couple months ago. <clears throat> so we've been scrambling for the last couple months um, to try to find some places for our employees to park to open up the parking lot because there's only 42 spaces in there to allow the guests or the patrons to come to avoid having traffic backups on Benstein, to avoid having people go into the park and having to cross the road. You know how busy it gets on Benstein during rush hour and afterwards. So we brought valet in and we've been fortunate that uh, the daycare allows us to use some of their spots after 6.30 during the evening and a few of them on the weekend after two o'clock. And we've been scrambling for the last six weeks a little bit after we were using the park. And again, I apologize, I know I've spoken with Sharon and with the chief and uh, the ordinance officer, John, we never knew it would be an issue. Um, but when you guys asked us to move, we did, and we haven't been back since then. And what we've been doing is using our valet service and we've got some temporary spots that we've been using down at 15 and Benstein that somebody I know is allowing us to park there right now, but it's on a temporary basis. And what we're having to do is use valet and ourselves to shuttle employees. Three, four o'clock, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, you know, three miles up the road. It's, it's not lit and it's, it's, it's not conducive for business to be running the employees back and forth, but we're doing whatever we need to do to keep them out of there. So we're here, we're asking to see if there's a way that we can get some type of acceptance, ask for some type of permit or some type of lease or agreement that we can use. I've talked to some of the officers about if it was feasible, maybe creating some type of permit just for our employees who come in later in the afternoon and just park their cars in a designated area. The cars are marked and then at the end of the night, I know that the ordinance says the cars have to be out of there by the time it's dark but if the officers were to drive by and see these cars that had some sort of sticker or something on them to make them aware of this is a <coughs> Benstein Grill employee car, maybe that would avoid any confusion of are there people there that aren't supposed to be there at night. So we've spent a lot of time, we've had a lot of the vi village people from Wolverine and from Commerce come in and enjoy some good meals and drinks and hopefully we've brought some good things to not just Wolverine, but to Commerce, to the area. I mean, I was looking on your website the other night. There was a little section on there that's for realtors and for other people, and you're talking about all the great things about moving into the village and why people would want to live here. And I think what we've done by adding the Benstein Grill is given another reason for new people coming in to go, there's a place in our backyard where we can either take our family or go on our own and enjoy a good meal. So we're here today to see if there's anything we can work out with council or anything we can do to help with parking to not just help us but to help eliminate that traffic on Benstein and people crossing the roads and things like that all right so um, I think at this point I'll go to our administrator and our attorney really because I think there there are some some concerns sure. some legal concerns that that we have about using the park specifically right so when Sharon first contacted me about this I, I said, okay, you got to talk to the insurance carrier as well, which I will get to. And then I did some research in the um, ordinances. And <clears throat> Benstein Grill is not, obviously, as you know, located in Wolverine Lake. So your ordinances don't apply to Benstein Grill. It, I, I didn't realize until you just said this moment that you acquired it through, uh, you know, a foreclosure or tax sale or something. Um, <clears throat> because this was a Commerce Township property, this parking deficiency is something that should have been addressed by Commerce Township. Having said that, we're gonna pretend like you're in the village of Wolverine Lake and look at you as if we would look at any other sure. village property and how we're gonna apply our ordinances to you even though technically they don't apply to you. If we're talking about off-site parking, which is what this is here, off-site parking is only allowed in the office or commercial district in the village as the ordinances are currently written, not park, which is what Clara Miller is zoned park. So it will require a zoning ordinance change to allow for off-site parking in park property. <coughs> also, off-street parking is permitted as an accessory use in a park, but for park purposes, not for private business purposes. 
under sections of the code, it establishes the village's powers over parks and recreation, and they are not authorized to lease or license within their code, license to use the park for uses other than park purposes. They have many legal obstacles to overcome, and let's say they could overcome all of these legal obstacles and go through multiple zoning ordinance changes, you, the hours you're proposing for operation of your business and the, and the parking that you would need conflict with the park hours of operation. So they'd also have to change their park hours of operation because the, the park, you're not allowed to park in the park or use the park after a certain hour and your business is proposing to do that. So they, there are, there is nothing in the code that allows them to do this for a village resident. They'd have to change five sections of their code to make that happen, and you're not a village resident. You're, their code doesn't even apply to you. So, and when, and when you say that, we're saying, even if we were trying to be more accommodating because he was a village resident, we would still have all of these obstacles in our way. You have to make a lot of changes to your ordinances. And the insurance carrier said, okay, talk to the lawyer about the legal issues here. Aside from that, if you can do this, because she didn't, she obviously didn't go through the code and go through all this, this review like I did. I want to see how you're proposing that because there's a lot of ways that you can use your public property that affect public use that change the exemption that you have, the governmental immunity, because it becomes then a proprietary function. It becomes basically a private use of public property and it changes their immunity. Right now, governments are immune from certain things, and depending on how that park would be used, how that lease or license to use would be set up, if it were allowed under their ordinances, the insurance company would need to know all those details to tell you if they believed that would affect your governmental immunity. So, and to make sure I'm clear on that, it, so if we had um, an incident with, with the parking lot, some sort of damage or something in there. <laughs> Currently, because we are covered under governmental immunity, um, we have very limited liability only under very cer certain circumstances for that. If we were operating the parking lot in conjunction with a commercial, um, with, a, with, a, with a commercial use, then that would more likely put us <laughs> under commercial liability laws and leave us subject to considerably more liability than we are just having a park parking lot. It would expose you more to, um, you know, liability. Okay. The, can I ask the lot? I mean, it was insurance for 19 years. I'm just, just curious to, maybe I didn't do governmental insurance, so I'm not sure. But what liability are we referring to? So we're not talking about damage to the vehicle. We're talking if somebody was in an accident in there, if somebody hit somebody inside of the park, which would come from the employees. Any personal or property damage injury governmental agencies i have immunity for almost everything right, there, right. there's exceptions if there is a proprietary use of public property they would fall outside of those that immunity that's why the insurance company said we need to see the specifics of if you can do this which you know for the reasons i said they can't unless they make a lot of changes their insurance needs to see that because they're immunity could be affected by how they're using the public property. You only get that protection of immunity if you're using it for public purposes. If you're changing your use from public to private, you lose that immunity, potentially. That's what their concerns were. So, so when, when, when governmental entities do public-private parking consortia, it's through a different sort of insurance arrangement? Is well, that? that's what she was saying. I would like to see the specifics of how you set that up and make sure that we're doing it in a way that is, you know, best suited to not affect your immunity. Okay. Let's um, <coughs> just say before we got to that stage, we'd have to change or per make the proposal right. changes in the ordinances yeah, before we even got into that conversation. Yeah, I mean, you have to make, you have to change five sections of your ordinance. Question, uh, I guess for Jennifer uh, or for all of us, um, it's it sounds like for the parking thing, there's quite a few hoops that have to be jumped through, and um, 
what about in a situation where they're having a, I don't know, a special, you know, like a Super Bowl night. A special or event or something. That we could still, uh, if they applied for, uh, give them, uh, there be some consideration for that. Like we've done in the past, I think we might be able to do something on a special event basis. You know, yeah. <coughs> apply for a for a special event permit, get for that, I and mean, I think we could probably work out something. And that'd be something that. you'd have to run by your insurance carrier because it's it's public entities can give um, special event permits for use of their parks, but they're not talking about using your park. They're talking about private parking in your mm -hmm. park. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's not, they're not using your park for their event. They're using, you know, they're not making use of your park yeah, for their special it's event. It's basically the same issue, only rather than one day, they're looking for 365. Yeah. If we right. back at the reverse, it's going to be the same exposure. I mean, you're just talking about time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, time it's still there. changing it from public to private yeah. use. Mm -hmm. so, and that's why the insurance companies and we need to see what you're talking about here. So just having some cars that are there, really the only ordinance that was being broken potentially was if cars were there after dark. Forget about if we were using it commercially or not, but if there's cars that are there, it's a public parking lot. If somebody happened to be going there or walking over to the restaurant, the ordinance comes in when it becomes dark outside and if a car is still there. I, I think as I understand what the attorney said, there's also it's also actually the usage of it for not park use, but for going to the restaurant, that it's a it's a private use, not a not an actual park public use. If an employee is parking there for that, if if you decided, uh, Mr. McGee, to park there because there was nowhere else to park, and came into our restaurant and left your car there until eleven o'clock at night, I, I, I think I'd mean, be in violation on, on on both items then, right? Mm -hmm. it, so you're saying someone is pretending like they're using the park? No, I'm, I'm park not trying to say park. that. I'm just saying what what ordinance is being broken is after dark if somebody's car is still there. Yeah, I mean the for the for anybody. Parking is for parking in the park is for park, park purposes. Use, period. Period. So it's an accessory. It's a permitted accessory use to the park. So I mean there are potentially several violations, but for sure the hour park hours of operation would be one of them. So, so any of us who are coming to the restaurant or doing anything outside of park use after dark would be in violation. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Or before dark, dark or not. Before or after. Yeah, before it doesn't matter what, yeah. if it's dark or not. Anytime. Okay. 24-7. It's a, park, it's a public park and the parking there is for park use. Okay. And yeah. you know, the council village, because of the way your ordinances are written, they have a fiduciary obligation to hold that public park for the public sure. and provide public parking for the public. For use of the park? Yes. Only for use of the park? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, so, so let's... Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Traditional road, if you head towards Maple, on the left-hand side, towards Bill's party store, you've got the commercial development back in there. On you're stuck on Maple. It's on no, it's no, no. State. Um, on Ben State. State. Traditional. It's on the east side of the road. Okay. And it's before you get to that Bill's Party store. The first time. And there's a few, there's a tile place back there. There's a couple. Of there's a couple. Of there's a couple of pardon. So we're, we're we're parking on the other side, and and I appreciate okay. that. It's it's we're just trying to come right. up with, and it's Some not your problem with solution. It's running people a mile and a half back and forth. Yeah, on no, the road, I, which I can see where that's not. It's, 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 it's not the village's problem. I mean, Sharon and I, we had that conversation. It's a problem we have to come up with. We're just here trying to see if there was any solution to make it better for everybody, and if it if it's in violation or can't be done for insurance or because of government regulations and I mean it is what it is and we'll figure out another solution but it certainly is worthwhile coming in to talk about it to see if there was anything we can do because I think mm -hmm. it's been a good thing hopefully for those of you that haven't been there or will be there I think it's a good thing for everybody whether we can't park there or wherever we end up parking so it was worthwhile coming and trying to see if there was anything we could come up with. Have you talked to Commerce Township at all about that? We have, and, and, and I'm in conversations with Randy and looking at some property behind us and, and just talking to a lot of people in the area. And uh, the last thing we're trying to do is park a car on the street, and we didn't want to be in Claire Miller when we knew that that was an issue. We're just trying to utilize and 
look at every avenue that we can to try to make it so that when you guys come to park at the restaurant, the last there, thing you have to think options. about is, is there going to be a spot or do I have to walk or do I have to cross Benstein Road, which is what we're trying to eliminate, families crossing Benstein Road, walking from the village or anywhere else. Have you guys uh, talked to the strip mall that's just north I of Benstein? I did, and unfortunately, you know, they, there. we're going to lease spots and you can have, you know, five parking spots and just financially to spend that kind of money to lease space yeah. for five spots just doesn't make sense. So, you know, we'll continue to, to, you know, turn over rocks and do what we need to do as we have been, but we didn't know until we came tonight to see if there was anything that we could come up with with the village. So. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of impediments. I, and I think it is probably worth saying too, that that parking lot, often very empty, but when it is <laughs> when it is crowded, it is fully crowded. There are, yeah. there are events where, or, you know, once Absolutely. the little league season starts up, it gets pretty crowded in there. For so, sure. So it does have some limitations around it. I, I, I get a dumb question. I mean, when you applied to Commerce for that facility and you bought it, I mean, isn't, I don't know the regulations, but isn't, isn't there it says if you got an occupancy of X, you have to have a parking spot of Y? Sure. It's, it's not a dumb question. It's a great question. And the whole, uh, all the laws were changed when the Athenian was knocked down and the draft was built that if you're a restaurant today where it used to be you could have for every three people it was one spot okay. after the draft was built and they went through they went through a lot to change there's code that's just called the draft mm -hmm. code in commerce right. that now like Red Robin when they built it out there near Costco that's why there's so many spaces there it's two to one now so they knew that there was an issue and we knew there was an issue when we bought it but we also thought we had 20 other spots secure somewhere else. So right now our goal is just if we can find a place to keep our employees off site so it frees up that 40 spots and with the valet at night, we can make it work. But we'll continue to work and we'll figure out a way to make it work. But it, it was worthwhile to come here to see what the law was and the ordinance and how it reads. And you know, I appreciate you guys even taking the time and listening to us. And well, worth asking the question, but I don't think we've got a good answer. No, that. it's okay. I appreciate your time, and uh, we hope to see you all in the restaurant soon. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Right. Okay. Uh, Frank, you want to go first? Good night. Good night. All right. Uh, item I, request <laughs> from Captain Ellsworth to become a member of Oakland County Tactical Training Consortia. This is a... Oh. Get your mic. Thank you. <laughs> this is, to me, it's, it's something we've been looking at for the last couple of years. I didn't act on it when it first started. Uh, we are one of the last in the county to join this. Um, one of the problems was we didn't have the personnel <laughs> at the time. We were pretty short-handed. Now we do have some ability to do some additional training. Uh, what this is is a, a consortium of all the different police departments and what we do is we, uh, if we join this consortium they apply for grants on our behalf for training and equipment and uh, it allows us to draw on other departments uh, for tactical uses if we have a hostage situation things that things that are normally outside our realm uh, we're also going to be trained in however we're able to call in other departments um, best part about this is it doesn't cost us uh, at least right now. They're talking about maybe a possibly $250 a year fee down the road, but that has not been passed yet. Um, but that gets all of our officers trained, our Marine officer, everybody can be trained. One of the things that I did find is, uh, and we, me and uh, Andy Stone were talking about this the other day, they actually have three or four different gators uh, that are equipped with lights and everything that we're able to use uh, once you're a member of this consortium. So uh, equipment is, uh, you know, is a first come, first serve. So I started thinking about this. I wanted to get it in front of you now, so maybe we can have something by July 3rd. <laughs> um, but this has to be accepted by them also, and uh, I'm going to sit down. It does require attendance uh, to their annual meet or their monthly meetings, which uh, I would be a, a voting member of. Um, it's a great program. It's been going on for two years. Everybody likes the training. It's uh, a good thing, and I guess I, if you have any questions about it. So, so let me let me let me see if I'm if I'm getting this overall. So essentially, they do a lot of apl applications for grants and other other types of funding to get equipment, to get training, you mm -hmm. know, both coursework and supplies, whatever else. 
with that money, the, the member communities can all send their officers Correct. and make requests on their, the equipment. their equipment inventory of, of various sorts for special events. And also, um, it facilitates interdepartmental support in emergency situations where, you know, something and we're, outside And we're all trained together because we're all trained the same. Yeah. All throughout the county, everybody's all trained the same, so we all understand uh, different things such as, you know, we don't have any schools in our, in our jurisdiction, however, if something were to happen at Wall Lake Central, obviously I would want everybody to respond. And we are trained the same as the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, so we will react and act the same way Puts that they do. The so day. essentially Every yeah. pooling everybody's resources. It is. It's everybody's going to pool the resources. One of the things, and I don't know if you happen to see Sheriff Bouchard on TV or in the paper the last couple of days, he's pretty hot about uh, some of the things that are going on. And we are looking to, uh, we've actually, they've asked, and I talked to him today at lunch, for $50 million for a regional training facility in Oakland County. And that's all part of this consortium. Um, if that were to happen, it would, chances are it would be in the southeastern area of the county because that's where it's able, that's very uh, centrally located for this area and it's not overly populated. And uh, it would be a complex for training. And, Similar to what they have up at Oakland uh, Community College, their Crest, which is the, I think Sharon has been up there before and seen some of the training. Um, if we're going to be criticized so much on our tactics, we need to be able to have the funds for training. And uh, he actually met with the president this week and talked to him about that. And so these, these are some of the things that I want to make sure that we don't get left behind. We are one of four departments left in the county that don't belong to this. And three of them are actually this week, you know, hopefully taking it in front of their councils to uh, to join. So, you know, there's strength in numbers. There's enough of us out there, and we can apply for larger grants. More uh, uh, more equipment can be bought with the more departments that are joined. So, and, 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 this this basically gives them the authority under or with Wolverine Lake, and I think uh, our attorney has probably dealt with this with other. Police departments, Milford, I know, is involved, and in, I know Wixom is involved. So, we have been warned now that there may, at some point in the future, be a small administrative membership fee. Yes, and like I said, uh, I, I heard the number of possibly they're batting around two hundred fifty dollars. That trains all the officers, so that's all included. And and like I wanted, I didn't know that when I first got the, all the paperwork. Talking to them today, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware. We certainly do spend more than that on training. So yes, we do. I would like to uh, make a motion that Captain Ellsworth applies for that. Support, second. So, motion Duff seconds Sinkowitz that the village becomes a member of the Oakland County Tactical Training Consortia with Captain Ellsworth as our representative. Mm -hmm. uh, further discussion? Captain, does, does Oakland County Sheriff provide this training or how, I mean, who basically, there's an organization, but who's like the overseers at Oakland County Sheriff? Department? Actually, uh, uh, there are uh, how we, there many the OCTAC, there are many different uh, people with, you know, they have a, a chairman, they have a vice chair, a secretary, treasurer, but everything is done out of Oakland County. However, they're not in charge of it. The board, there's a board of directors that's elected throughout the, uh, the members. They, <coughs> so it's not like Oakland County is running this consortium. They are part of this consortium, but is run as a board of directors. So, you know, everybody gets a vote, and it, has, it takes two-thirds to get something done. As far as the training and things go, there are different trainers throughout the county. Um, you know, Sergeant Cunningham is a trainer in, in, uh, in Taser, for example, but uh, tactical, tactical training, uh, a lot of them come from Novi, some of them come from Troy, the ones that actually have their own tactical team. But we're all training together now, so we have one cohesive, you know, uh, just in case. I mean, any more, we just grant. never know. So, in, in, the, in, the, in the grants that they're mentioning here, I mean, the funding of this grant, is that funded by the federal government? Is that funded by the state or both, by the county? Both or any grants the that they, they can above. get. Obviously, the grants that are out there, so there are some private corporations that are doing grants for law enforcement. Okay. Uh, for, you know, Chrysler, for example, being in Oakland County, um, they've been very generous as far as grants go. So we do uh, apply for our Department of Justice grants. Um, it's also MCOLs or the uh, Michigan Coalition on Law Enforcement grants. Um, the 302 funds 
which are pretty much diminished now. Um, those type of grants that we're working through the state police with also. So, but this is a, it's a win-win, I think, oh, for yeah, everybody. It makes sense. I just. Yeah. Right. Any further questions? Um, so has the uh, attorney had just a chance to look at the overall agreement? Or? Yes, mm -hmm. and a couple communities, and that's good. Okay, cool. Uh, are we get a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, okay, that brings us to item J, the second call to the public, opportunity for citizens to address the council regarding any and all village business. And having said that, I would call on you when we got to park and rec. I went down the. Went down and, and realized we don't have a park and rec item item today. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're mute. So uh, let me go to Sh you want to go to you want to defer to the sure. stampers first. Let's go to the stampers first. I'm kind of confused about this. Are we safe without being bothered anymore about our no. No. Sam Stamper? Are we safe with now? I mean, not only at the present time, but in the future, that we don't have to worry about our yeah, our building or anything like that. I think, not permanently. We're still under the temporary the temporary moratorium. The planning department has it on their agenda to discuss what they're what they're going to do with that ordinance at this month's planning department meeting in a couple weeks. So we're still under the temporary injunction. We haven't changed anything about that. Planning is going to look at it and then. Then it'll come back to the back to the council to make a decision. All right. So is there a possibility that Pay and I will be granted a grandfather's clause on our because everything has been up there, like the fences have been up there for over 50 years, and that building has been up there over 20. I, I think there are all sorts of possibilities. It really depends on what planning, planning does when they address it address it, and then it comes back to us. I mean, I think the possibility of grandfathering something or you know working with it it's something that we've talked about here but until planning looks at how we're how we're going to enforce it and under what circumstances I, I can't say what they would bring back to us all right if, uh, I, I know I know that sounded like 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 an like an like a politician it sounded like a politician but, but really I can't say I can't say until planning looks at it planning's agreed to look at it Brian's here he's gonna bring bring your input into planning um, they're gonna have their meeting in a couple weeks and you know we've heard from you guys we'll, we'll, we're going to try to find something reasonable to do here well it would be possible for us to appeal anything if it re is rendered it not in our favor I, I think there there will probably be some sort of appeal mechanism in there so we don't have to worry about the ordinance officer come giving us a ticket then mm -hmm. not today, not, today. <laughs> not tomorrow next week I, I'll, 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 I, I promise I will call you guys if if when and if we find out what what the decision from planning is what their input is and what comes to us, but okay, thank your, you. Your, but your your situation is specifically yeah, the one they're we're asking them to work on. So, well, if my grandfather calls, it didn't have that grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have our I'll have our attorney take that phrasing under advisement. <laughs> thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. You think they understood it's an open meeting for planning? Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, look, just one, one, one question. And so you guys know the planning meeting is an open meeting. It's Thursday, two weeks from now. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. We'll have some cookies for you, maybe. <laughs> uh, it sounds unlikely. <laughs> no, heck no. Occasionally. <laughs> Linda okay. Champagne, Champagne, 250 Oak Island, also the Parks and Recs Board for Commerce Township, uh, the Wolverine Lake resident. Um, the million dollar renovation of Maple Glen entrance and the egress and, um, egress and ingress is starting and may have started already. I don't know. John, have you been down that way to see? They said yes. they were supposed to start. Two. Yes, they have started. Okay. And that's going to go dirt. on through July. Um, when the uh, landscaping should be completed in the beginning of July, but they're doing all sorts of just 
a million dollars worth of renovation in there. They're moving baseball things. <coughs> doing some drainage. You got some sewer pipes in there. They're going to be putting some storm drains in or something. Yeah, it's it like, like pretty. It's pretty pretty big project. Um, so, anyways, I gave Sharon the list. I don't know if she wants to send that out, but there is going to be some some road work done and stuff like that on Glengarry. Um, and Hickory, and our park here, Hickory Glen, um, they're going to be adding an additional entrance sometime soon. I, I haven't gotten a date on that, but they've got $25,000 allotted to add an additional entrance there. Um, one of the cool things that's going on is they're really trying to get um, a lot of improvements done over at Richardson. Um, it's just pretty run down, and they're looking for, you know, to put $50,000 or more into that. Um, Jennifer started an idea for a community garden at Richardson Center before she left. Um, they've allotted ten thousand dollars for that, but I don't know how soon or if that's going to if somebody's going to take that on. Um, but other than that, you know, I just kind of wanted to give you an update on what was going on with that. And uh, that's about it from Parks and Rex at Commerce Town. Right. Is there any idea where that second entrance is going to be, Linda? I guess we don't talk. You know, I'll all find all out. But I want to say that it's going to be closer. They, they have to come to the village. No, I understand. I just thought right maybe in, <laughs> in approval, these so discussions, some, something up closer to that way where it's everybody has to drive around back. And yeah, and I, you know, and it's funny. I was I asked them, and I didn't really get an answer because I don't know if they even know is that if they're going to be extending to that new comp, the new development. If they couldn't actually, how close it is to the entrance up here to, to Hickory Glen, if they wouldn't want to run the whole thing so that you had an egress in, out of the park that would have a lane that would, you know, help move it. So That's I a private road, though. No. Yeah. Oh, is it going to be public? Oh, well. So I, you know, if, if they were doing an extension, they may want to bring it down further. You're talking to about the path. Park. You're talking about the pathway. She's talking about the pathway. No, no I think no, you're talking, talking about, about the passing road. lane. The passing the lane. So you could oh, have passing okay. lane all the way out. Yes. Two yeah. lane on that side up to the oh, up, up to bus the other green grass. Yeah. yeah. Can't be too close to Oakview because of the hill. So and I mean the pathway too. Um, but anyways, and I and, and off the subject of parks and recs, I really wanted to tell the DPW and then Mike what a great job they did on the bridge. It looks great. It's really cool. Thanks. Um, and uh, you guys must be doing a really, really good job since Mr. Renwick's only made one comment in recent months. <laughs> <laughs> it was a substantial letter. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. And I don't know that I mentioned everybody, but just so everybody knows, Linda Champagne is a member of the Park and Rec Board, um, and she's the village resident that we have on the Park and Rec Board. So she's our liaison out there. Anybody else second call to the public? Hmm. Seeing none, I will close the second call. And that'll bring us to recommendations from the Water Management Board. Let's go with number one. Uh, Lori Robertson. John, you want to do an introduction? Lori here, actually. Hi, Lori. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been hiding. Heck, I didn't see you come in. Well, Lori, um, without a doubt, is going to be a good addition to the board. Um, she has been at water management board meetings I guess over the last two years from time to time maybe three years a heavy attender at the uh, aeration discussions that we had she's also a heavy user as her family is of the um, the lake skiing skin diving am I missing something um, no wakeboard yep <laughs> oh did you okay well that's a sacrifice, Lori, you'll have to make in the future again. Um, in addition to all of that attendance, I, we come to find out that she's used her uh, skin diving skills to help, I guess, investigative, environmental investigative items for other lakes. So we're looking forward to her joining the board. Scuba diving. Uh, scuba diving, yeah. yeah. Skin diving, scuba diving. Term. Yeah, it's a 70s. Term. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a 60s or a 50s term. Leave me alone. Mike Nelson, scuba diving at a wetsuit is right. often recommended that's in our right. lake. <laughs> <laughs> it is not always warm. Well, um, so. Okay. Well, it sounds like a like a good candidate. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion from Nagy. Second from Sinkowitz to appoint. Lori Robertson to the board. I have one, one question. My name on my, all my legal stuff is hyphenated Robertson Sinhambus. I think I requested this year to go with Sinhambus. It's just 
Oh, okay. So, so Robertson Sahimbas or Robertson? Just, just go with Sahimbas if that's coming. Sahimbas, S E H. No, S A H. S A H. I. Maybe Robertson. Oh, wait. No. I S A H. To appoint Lori to the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, motion Nagy, second Sikowitz. Uh, further questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Let's swear you in. Could you come up here, please? No swearing in for you. Here. She's Actually, she's, she's, she's only coming around here. expiring <laughs> December 31st, 2015. <laughs> she's filling a vacancy, yeah. so. Yeah. She'll be back. Hi, Lauren. Would you raise your right hand to repeat after me? I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution of the State, and the Constitution of the State, and that I will faithfully perform the duties, and I will faithfully perform the duties of Office of Water Management Board, of Office of Water Management Board, in and for the village of Wolverine Lake, in and for the village of Wolverine Lake. County of Oakland, County of Oakland, State of Michigan, State of Michigan, according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Right. That was worse than my hair. It was only the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It was worse than mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry. All right. All right. Item two, Water Management Board recommends the council uh, ask DPW to repair pipe to documentation well and replace the missing sign if, in fact, a sign is missing. So, um, maybe you want to start with that? Talk sure. yeah. uh, I had uh, yeah. email correspondence with uh, Clifford Gantz about the... Uh, uh, this would be, yeah, the uh, augmentation well at Wolverine Drive there. Mm -hmm. In the years past, it had been slightly dislodged from, there's a, like a cement tube that comes out from the well itself. Mm -hmm. There's a CMP metal, uh, metal culvert pipe that was just an extension out a little bit farther. Um, previously, it was slightly dislodged. This winter, it took a, a farther shot on that. I had correspondence with him about this and saying I'd take a look at that when I got down to the well. and. Um, I thought we were good on that. Um, it, it has dislodged farther. I think my plan right now is just to remove that. And there's a rusted edge there. I um, mm -hmm. haven't gotten to it yet. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what they're talking about for a sign. I thought they were talking about down at the Nantucket Beach, where we have a sign that says Culvert Ends all the way out there. Um, in my history, I've never known a sign by the boat launch. There is a, uh, a sign post that was kept so that um, basically there's two posts that lodged the end of this tube extension so it wasn't able to wander about. And maybe they thought there used to be a that sign there used attached to, be a sign to there. that. But in my tenure, and I've actually checked with uh, over 10 years than I, there's never been a sign attached to this thing. So um, basically we just haven't gotten there yet. Um, okay, so it sounds, it sounds to me it's on the, it's it's on on the, the it's on it's on it's on the list of things to do. That's on the board. I don't think the correspondence quite got through. My correspondence with Cliff Yance kind of went through with uh, Tony Swedich, who brought this up, and I'm getting there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and Sharon, did, I think you spoke with him too. Or? Uh, no, I, I didn't speak with um, Cliff about it. I know Andy had okay. talked with him, and Andy and I talked about it, and we mm -hmm. were trying to figure out what sign they were talking about. And we just discovered that the two posts were there, which were sign posts, and so they assumed that there was, was more of a structural integrity a to keep the two from still not actually moving away sign. during ice times and things, because it's actually lower than ice periods. It was just a structural type thing. So, so they used sign posts sign actually, I think, there to hold it. Mm -hmm. okay. Since they were empty, someone thought I'll say that. Hey, yeah. to be a sign. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> There's a sign post without a sign, uh -huh. or it's a sign. Yeah. It was a structural thing. Yeah. Okay. And I think it was safer to keep that sign post above water level as opposed to hide it underneath the water. Yeah, so where somebody would. Somebody would have a structure or a danger there. 
Um, I had a lot of correspondence during that email with uh, Mr. Yance about uh, the boat washing station. Um, there was a number of things. Uh, running the, the Helmsford well, um, in which we've been doing, actually I did some calculations, I think. I left them over there. We ran, if you can give me one second. I'm sure you've all been a little curious about the, the slow rising of the, the lake this year. And it was interesting when I started working some of my numbers in, in correspondence yeah, with 2014. And actually our target dates for um, the lake levels have been exactly the same, weirdly enough. Um, and through my calculations on the Helmsford well this year that I've ran so far, it's the only one we have a, a meter on. As it used to be a, a community service well. We've ran uh, over uh, uh, 11 million, well over 11 million gallons just from that, that well alone. And that's the smaller of the three wells that we have. Uh, we're four inches down on our lake level right now, which I think is right within target range. Um, according to a year ago, all my stats are right there. Um, we're two and a half inches low, two and actually two and three quarters inch low uh, for our normal rain level for, for April on our it's dry our April. Average some more. Yeah. So, so I shut the gates basis. down uh, a week and a half water. earlier than normal I would up for the uh, the April 1st. Mm -hmm. And the pumps have been on since, <laughs> since uh, <laughs> April. April 22nd <clears throat> so um, everything's coming along we'll get there okay. I know it's, it's really hard to watch things rise <clears throat> so slowly but patience it, it's gonna get there I'm sure we'll, hit our we'll, we'll get one good downpour and everyone will be like hey the lake's too high <laughs> exactly and that's exactly what happened last year we were right on the same marks and uh, within you know then we started dropping some water out in a week, so. <clears throat> yeah Okay, so it sounds like pipe situation's under control, yes, sign situation's under control. I don't think any any ac action needed from council tonight on that. I agree. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, while we're talking on the water board here, um, I want to make a comment about um, that it, how long it took, almost 10 or 11 months to get these, the GPS coordinates from uh, the committee I don't know why um, it took so long for everybody. I d went to Paul's house three times and he said he was gonna do it and he didn't. So the, basically what I'm saying is, is that I talked with Sharon and she said, Cliff said that he could take the GPS coordinates and put them on a map so we can have it in an expedient fact, um, fashion. What I'm saying is that if something happens again where they start dragging their feet or I'm too busy, I can't do this. I'd like to have a backup plan that we ask Paul from our lake consultant. He does all that GPS stuff to give him the numbers and him put it on a map. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think in general that's probably not a problem problem for him. The problem with this particular one would have been that he didn't know where they put the fish structures. No, but now that, now that we have all five locations, mm -hmm that I think everybody should know where they are so we can all u take advantage of them. I, I think for sure they, they should appear on the annual fish, or the annual, sorry, the annual lake management report. Yeah, they will undoubtedly. Yeah. yeah. Some of the problems, now, of course, are volunteers. Now you're talking about the annual at the end mm -hmm. or at the beginning of the summer? Uh, it's always at the end. The end. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what about the, the, the few people that know where they are get to utilize that as a fishing area and the rest of us don't? Uh, so let me see if I can summarize where we are with those. The, we have all the locations. The village has them. Yes. They're going to be put on a map. Yes. We're expecting that to be presented back to the village very soon. Um, if we not, should be soon. John, yeah. John, can you take that back to Water Management Board? I sure will definitely that. do that. If my memory serves me correct, Ed, you were against us putting them in, weren't you? No, I was, I was against the idea that they were going to put them in with what kind of what, what kind of wood they were going to use uh -huh. and how they'd be located. My concern was them being in shallow water and get tangled up with fishing line. And but the bottom the bottom line is, John, whether I was or I wasn't. Now that they're in, let's let's fi 
keep going on where we should and quit dragging our feet on this. Yeah, I don't think anybody was dragging their feet, although, uh, you know, as, as Paul explained, his wife has gone through major surgery and he's taking care of kids. I mean, it just happened. Uh, so we apologize if I guess we need to. But uh, they did their job. So. Okay, so, so we'll get those numbers out to you. Thank you. All right. Um, we have one more item under Water Management Board, mm -hmm. um, which I added. Uh, Pump noise, pump noise, aeration, pump noise. I know it was discussed at the board yep. mm -hmm. this 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 month. Um, I have I've walked by a few of those those, and they are a little loud. Um, I remember we got a complaint last year from the Morses down by their house. That one was pretty easily remedied. It was a loose fitting that needed to be tightened yeah. up. Um, I don't, John, I don't know if you if, do you know if the pond guy has gone out to look at the current noise issue or. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know if he's addressed that particular issue. Um, they really are loose mounted and they're just laying on, on stone beds is what the issue is. I think the board talked about the fact whether the pond guy should in fact um, maybe think of mounting them on a, a pad similar to an air conditioning compressor so that they're, you know, on something rather than yeah. in stones yeah. and, and right. beginning to move. I, I mean, I was noticing that with the one on Wolverine yeah. Drive, where, I, where right. I walked up to it and it was kind of rattling and I put my hand down on it and then it quiets right back yeah. down to the, the level we would expect. But without that, they're louder than we expected. Yeah, they are louder. I, I think the, the board did discuss it at length and that was some of the comments. Uh, do you want the board, uh, Sharon, to? Uh, I, I don't think no. he's addressed that issue, he's but I'm. Nothing came back to me, so yeah. from okay. the board. Yeah, so that should be the pond guy's responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to tell him about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. With it wasn't the shell over it, I would think uh, that would magnify any noise. I, well, we don't have a there, copy of the minutes here, but I was this, this, one's, this really? one's, I did see brief discussion already there. Okay. All right. Well, well at any rate, um, let's see if we can get to the pond let's, guy. And get yeah, let's see done. if we can have the administrator look at it, whether it's mounting them better, or I know at one point we even talked about doing a second yeah. cover. Whatever, yeah. whatever it is, I think I think they do need to be a little quieter. Yeah. I don't know if we need to make comment also that uh, the board fought our, uh, did we, we talked about this, I think, uh, more at the board again the water management board the last two meetings about uh, how the DEQ has made decisions uh, uh, about not allowing us to move the aerators into deeper water right and it was based upon two studies one in a lake in Colorado and another one on a lake in Florida uh, the lake in Florida I understand was 41 acres uh, average depth of six and a half feet and they were talking about the aeration possibly um, increasing the average temperature of the water column. Well I think a, a lake in Florida that's you know <laughs> at, at 85 no yeah do. so anyways uh, I just wanted everybody to know that uh, the boards uh, uh, had discussions with uh, uh, certainly our consultant we're going to pay particularly <coughs> close attention on our reporting back to the DEQ we have to anyways and see whether there's some merit to this restriction that the Department of Natural <coughs> Resources has put in. So, uh, and, and we know that aeration really is a three-year project or more anyways. So just wanted the general public to know that the Water Management Board is on top of these things too. All right. Um, I think that's all we've got there. Uh, don't think we need a motion on any of that. Anything else, Water Management Board? <coughs> All right. Thank Set. you. <coughs> um, L M N O. All on P. consent. P. Set topics <coughs> for the 2015 work session, and I would suggest that our added item Q uh, gives us <laughs> what we're going to be working on in the work session, which is. The proposed budget for fiscal year 2016. Let me hand that down this way. Uh, before we get to the introduction of this, do I hear a motion to set the May work session for Wednesday? I believe that's the 27th. Yes. Wednesday, the 27th at 7 p.m. to go through the proposed 2016 budget. Motion stack, second duff. All in favor? I'll be out of town. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, sorry, Ed will be out of town. Sorry, Ed. Uh, make sure you give us comments and yep. whatever whatever you've got. The effects. Um, <laughs> I don't think it affects my telephone. <laughs> so that'll be uh, 
that'll be our work sure. session this month. With that, we have the proposed budget. Yep. Mr. Kellick. Mr. President, thank you. Um, Council, you'll see a, uh, a couple summary sheets in front. First, a memo from me that outlines the situation this year. We're in good shape, so you uh, needn't worry about uh, uh, anything. The, the property tax revenues are on the uptick, as our state chair of revenues. Our expenses are pretty well in check. We are uh, proposing 3% um, uh, raises administratively and contractually for DPW at this point. Where I think the uh, discussion will be um, uh, very interesting in two, two weeks' time will be on our capital outlay items. Um, I've outlined the ones that I think are in front of us, both in terms of the goal-setting session that we recently went through and also the, uh, the last time the Finance Committee kind of prioritized some of the things that we mm -hmm. thought we needed to do in the, in the near term. I think the, uh, the, the good thing is that we... we to highlight those very, very briefly, uh, we need to continue, I think, with the improvements associated with the building, both in, in the inside and certain things on the outside that, uh, like irrigation, like probably the parking lot, if in fact the uh, uh, well monitoring situation is resolved, things of that nature. So we've got something budgeted there. Uh, John Ellsworth has given a list of police equipment that uh, he thinks is necessary for the upcoming year and, and, and can certainly make the case for that. It's not including a car this year. It's strictly equipment. Um, we're looking at making improvements to the building in Clara Miller Park once and for all, improving the electric, improving the storage, moving ahead with that, and continuing the development of the, uh, of, of the parks in much the same fashion that the Park and Recreation Capital Committee uh, kind of deemed over their past several meetings. So I'd, I can meet with you individually at any time you like over the ensuing couple of weeks. Uh, if you need a primer, or I'd like to you know, go over some uh, data. If you want to see anything else, uh, whether it's historical, state equalized value, or taxable valuation data uh, that you don't have here that I've given, uh, given out, you'll see a history of fund balance, for example. Uh, and a few other things, but um, you know, I'm at your disposal and can meet anytime, any place. So typically what we do is just, that's the d end of the discussion today, bring that to the work session next week. Uh, tonight would be a good time to, uh, or right now I think, or at some point, uh, would be a good time to adopt the, uh, the two resolutions that you have in front of you that were kind of added on. One is to simply receive and file the document, and then the other is to set the date for the public hearing. This is legally required and we have to advertise and so forth for it. And the last couple of years, we've held the public hearing the same day that we adopt the budget, which is the uh, regularly scheduled meeting in June. There's a typo on item number two. It's not the 2014 budget, it's the 2016 budget. So with that, Mr. President. Okay, so let me uh, let me see. If, let's get the motion on the floor first, and then we'll preserve the discussion. All right, do I, do. Mr. Sapp, proceed. That the village will bring Lake Village Council receive and file the proposed budget for the fiscal year ending June thirtieth, two thousand and sixteen. Second. So motion stack, second Duff. <laughs> Further discussion of that one. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do I hear a second? I'd Motion. like to propose that the public hearing for the proposed budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2016 be scheduled for the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Wolverine Village Council on June 10th, 2015. Second. Motion stack. Second Duff. Further discussion of that one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, further discussion of any of that? I should point out one more thing, Mr. President. I didn't include any numbers for South Commerce Pathway Extension. I also didn't include any numbers for any of the uh, uh, possible remedies for uh, uh, issues re related to the uh, uh, shallowness in the canals. I just don't have good numbers for that, but it, it's on the radar. It's something that has been discussed. It's certainly been expressed as a uh, major goal, but rather than, <coughs> than pull a number out of thin air, which is what I would have had to have done, I think the body politic gets together and in two weeks time we'll probably be able to come up with a you know pretty good indication as to what or how we could proceed with those two things. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Well, everybody's got your budget. Uh, get a chance to go through it over the next couple weeks and talk about it at length in two weeks. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Condit. Thank you to everybody. I, you know, it's a fairly small document for all the work that goes into it. But uh, thanks, everybody, and we'll work on it a bit more. Uh, brings us to pending <coughs> business. We have none. Brings us to update from Captain Ellsworth. I have nothing. It's been a fairly smooth transition over the last couple of weeks. I had a knee surgery. I'm back and uh, better than ever. So. Ready to dance. I did that Saturday night. <coughs> Sergeant right. Cunningham was uh, maybe carried on Saturday night. So. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Update from the treasurer. Um, Council, we have four new workstations in the administrative office. No more windows. Uh, XP, Mr. President, you'll be I no more pleased. sleepless nights. I am pleased to hear that. <laughs> However, because of county constraints, we are Windows 7, so not completely state-of-the-art. But they seem to be working fairly well in, in, in general, and um, I think we're a little more productive than we have been. Things get a little bit old after five or six years, and these new workstations are, are pretty helpful. All right. Update from the administrator. We will have lake treatment tomorrow, so follow your yellow signs. And um, it's supposed to be a beautiful day, so it's a good day for that. Uh, the Oak Island Park sign has arrived, and we're working on actually installing it in the berm. And next month, I should be bringing you information for a sign in front of our building. All right, council comments, and this month I think we will start down on this side. All right, well, we still have openings for the Coxeter Golf Classic, which will be May 30th at Bay Point. Cost for golf and dinner is $80, and we we'll also have openings for the dinner. The dinner is $40, and it's going to be at Uptown from 6 o'clock till whenever. So all are welcome, and um, you can get tickets up at the village or at onup.org. Thank you. Thank and you. you can make donations there, too. And you can make donations there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finally getting nice out, so hopefully everybody gets a chance to enjoy some nice weather, and hopefully it continues. Niggy. I guess uh, we have Memorial Day holiday coming up. That's something to celebrate, and everybody have a nice, safe summer. Scott. I concur with Mr. Nagy. Let's have a nice, safe summer this year. It's good weather coming. I Good concur drop. with the last two. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double concurrence. <laughs> Sinkowitz. Well, everybody <coughs> start to enjoy the lake a little bit more, and I think on Memorial Day, if you have a flag, put it out. Uh, uh, Traveling an awful lot the last month, so it is it is good to be back, and I am glad that spring is finally showing up because I was beginning to doubt it would arrive. It'd be cold tonight. Yep. With that, um, make a motion. I will take. Got a motion from Stack, second from Sinkowitz to go into closed Close session uh, discussion. I think I should should tell everybody. I think this is likely to be a fairly substantial and lengthy closed session. So unless you're you're really you're really glutton to stick around, <laughs> uh, we might not be back for a while. So uh, fair warning on that. And all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned to closed session.